This is the old Becker home on West Chippewa Street, where F.F. F. Becker moved his family, and we're going to talk to Jack Becker, who will tell us about moving there and about this beautiful big oak and when it was planted. Yep, this is such a handsome house. Do you remember when y'all your family moved here? Yes, we moved in about 1904, just before Christmas, and that was uh, I was five years old, and we had uh, all at that time I had three married sisters who had each one had several children, and that was the highlight of the Christmas season of, ha of having everything for the for the grandchildren. And it was a, a big crowd when Christmas time come. When at Christmas time, and then the Christmas tree was brought in from the woods on Christmas Eve and put up. And Christmas morning, when we came down, the Christmas tree and all the presents were all decorated. It wasn't in the house a month before. Uh. <laughs> Never was a fire hazard from being standing. Now, did like, they put it in that hall inside or in no, the living room? No, it was room? in in, uh, in the room just behind Mama's bedroom. It was used for different things. It was, it was uh, pool room had a pool table in it a little a uh, year or two later because all the boys were growing up by that time. It was five of us in a row. I was the youngest and John now, was the who, oldest of that What group. was the name of the boys who were there at that time? Uh, it was John and Pia and Jamie and Cleve and I were all born uh, consecutively. <laughs> <laughs> a busy time for my me, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was, I wore hand-me-downs so I bought my own first long, <laughs> long pants suit when I was about 15 years old. Now, who were the girls who were married? Eileen and Susie and Joseph. Uh-huh. Ain't Kathleen hadn't been married? No, she was that married night. in this house. Oh, I, I remember her well, telling me it was just a beautiful affair uh -huh. and all the carriages came. Uh -huh. And the, car the driveway went from this entrance all the way through the block. And as far as driving in, just... Now, didn't you tell me that Poppy owned all of this land around? Yes, this generally from, this... From the, but he, beyond that, uh, Becker Street. Yeah, all the was, way... Was, uh, it, it, well, it was some distance beyond that, through, through to Cleveland Avenue, which was named that. I don't know whether it was named for President Cleveland or, or Grover Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. Well, tell me about this tree right here. This was planted, I think, about 1909. And it was the largest one that could trans, you know, at that time that they thought was safe to transplant. But they advised them to keep it well watered. They brought it to Louisiana. So it was all of our young ones duty to. I don't know why they didn't put a hose and let it run on it, but we'd have to carry buckets of water from the faucet and pour on it, <laughs> which made it a bigger job. Now, how long did you all live in this house? Until? Well, it was just about 10 years I've, since I figured it up. It seemed, it seemed longer because of that yeah. age and all. It just yes, those were your growing longer. up years, I'm sure. Uh -huh. Now, as we are facing the house, if you will turn, as you went into the living room, um, into that entry hall, what is the uh, room to the left with the big round windows? That was the big living room. Uh-huh. And, and that then, was where every, they didn't have a, a living room and then a den. That was the living room and every, every evening and all, any time of the, all the grown people congregated in the living room and behind it was a, 
follow. And it was, a, they were sliding uh, real wide doors going into the parlor and then beyond the parlor was the dining room which also had big sliding doors so when they were open it made just one big huge ballroom. Oh yes and y'all had, had ma on many occasions and the uh, dining room had an alcove in it with the filigree of that period. That part of the house was, was part of the old house. It was moved the front of the house, all of the two-story part was it was built new at that time. Now what room was there to the right of the entry? That was mom and daddy's bedroom. All right, and was there a room be and behind the room that? Behind that was where the Christmas tree was. Uh -huh. And then after you went upstairs, what was up there? Well upstairs was five bedrooms. It was three on one side and two on the other. And all of the seven boys had those three well, in the, the three bedrooms, uh -huh. and the girls had the other side. Did they, anybody ever get a room of their own? <laughs> had this big room with a circle, and it was his room, and it was all, he was a bachelor, he was 28 years old, that was almost an old man at that time before he married. So when he moved out, it was, we all got a little more dreams, <laughs> but all the, as they went back, the rooms had all kind of pets and things in the windows and out of the windows and in bowls and, and counting the marbles they had one at night, dropping them in a Oh, box. that must have been fun. It now, was, is there any truth to the rumor that I heard, and maybe Daddy told me, that y'all had a trapeze in that big hall at one time? That was downstairs. That was, oh, downstairs. That was a skating rink and a gymnasium <laughs> and punching bags and that was a and true boxing, activity room boxing mat and we had boxing matches and all it was a, and was this where ain't cindy held sway in the kitchen but the kitchen was uh, to the right of that going out towards it in the, in the breakfast room which he used mostly for a dining room. But Aunt Cindy was, was on, the cook, wasn't was she? On that. She was the cook 24 hours a day. Oh, ever okay. Cooked every meal and policed all of us if anything <laughs> we didn't do right. She'd just say, I'd tell, tell your father. And we knew if, we, if she told the father, we got a spanking. So yeah, so. We tried to tell her we wouldn't do it again. <laughs> so she would Well, now, I think Aunt Kathleen had told me that grandmother Becca, I mean, your grandmother lived there for a while also. She didn't live in this house. Oh, she didn't. She, uh, was, she died before I was born. Oh, I see. Oh. And then after Mommy and Poppy moved from this house, where did they go? Well, we went to, to the Bowen house over on Church Street near Whitworth College. Uh-huh. We lived there about a year, and then we moved in the Crosby house. It was a big two-story house. Crosby's had moved to Picayune. And then eventually they moved into the house that you built for them on East Court Street. Yeah, well the, the house was there but I uh, changed a lot of it and, and uh -huh. added a big living room in the back and, and Uncle and John. And Uncle John and Aunt Marnez lived next door they in a brick house. house. Next door we, we bought that house and lot together and John bought the lot and I bought the house. Uh, but when I was young, Ben Becker was just my very favorite cousin except when it was Ben and Jane and me as a trio. And uh, I can remember we shared bicycles and played together every day of our lives until he and his family moved to Jackson. Well, ben was a wonderful young man. He had such a happy outgoing disposition. Everybody just loved him. John Jr.'s older brother was more retiring and all. He, he was fine, did everything just right, but he didn't didn't have the enthusiasm and all that Ben had. Oh, Ben made, just made life fun. We always remember what good times we had together. <laughs> well, Jeff, I just thank you so much. This is such an interesting, interesting house, and I know it was a scene of a lot of different activities. Yeah. Well, we're so happy that the present owners have done such a wonderful job. Really, it's more 
luxurious and, and, and lovely in every way than even it was then. Yes, well I hope I'll get to see it soon. This is the home of Cleve and Ruth Becker on West Chippewa Street. And this is the home that I remember when it, I was growing up. Jane, Barbara, Liddy, and Mike were the children. Mike was a good bit younger, so he was not around when I came over and Sally came to spend the night many times in those upstairs bedrooms. But we're going to go over and talk to Jane and Mike here and get a few more details. Good morning, Jane and Mike. How about telling us something about when you were uh, memories you have of this house. All right, now I, I, I grew up at the brickyard and I was the, the sophisticated age of 13 years old when I moved here, so my early childhood was not in this house. This lot was a ballpark when, when the Becker boys were growing up and so the house was made, the, the plans were made by Ruth and Cleve Becker. He, he drew these plans all off and what they wanted and then selected the brick at the brickyard and I forget who the contractor was, but they did most of the planning and all themselves. We, like I say, moved in here when I was 13. It was before Mike was born. And my sisters are the ones that had their childhood here in the backyard in the summer house. And I'm going to let Mike take up that because I don't remember having but one spend the night party in the summer house because I had gotten too old. But I remember uh, Sally and I coming and spending the night in the big dormitory right, bedroom now, on the second floor. Many times everybody was welcome. Now that was one thing, Mama. You could, she couldn't have too many people in the house spending the night. And so whenever anybody needed to or wanted to spend the night, they just about came. Uh, so I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna get night the summer house. All right. Well, I, of course, was born and raised here, so I was all over the neighborhood and. and uh, summer house was a house around a big pine tree that was screened in and uh, when I was young we used to all by the neighborhood to spend the night bring their cots over and spend the night and go from one house to another all summer long to spend the night out and uh, many years later Jane I don't remember what storm it was that knocked over the pine tree. It was Betsy I believe. Hurricane Betsy. Betsy. Uh, destroyed the uh, summer house and uh, it never was rebuilt, but the actual brick foundation patio part is still back. One of the most notorious summer parties uh, was the time that uh, Barbara's group and Sally was in that group. They were all spending the night in there. And Jimmy Cassidy and his friends pitched up hoses all the way across over there and in the middle of the night shot the hoses and they <laughs> wet them all down. And here was about 14 wet down girls in their blankets. <laughs> they probably had to move inside they after that. Inside. Screaming was going all over the neighborhood. It was <laughs> Actually, this house is right next door to the house we had just visited, the old Becker house, where Uncle Jap had grown up. So, at, and while Jane was living here, that was the Cassidys lived ne in that house. Why don't we go inside, Jane? I remember that uh, picture of you three girls that I, I always remember that connected with your living room. So let's That's see right. that. That was done by Ella May Mason, and the Mason's place was next to the brickyard, out at the brickyard. Pink Mason was her father, uh -huh. and an old friend of ours, so they were old family friends. Well, did she continue painting? She or? has painted and stayed in the art world, and she now resides in Jefferson. Oh, I see. All right. This is Victor. Jane, hasn't this hung here all the time that y'all have been in this house? Uh, that's right. This was done not long after, you can tell by our ages, that was done not long after. I was 13 when we moved in, and I must be 15 or 16 in that picture. And uh, so this video, uh, all to my memory, I don't remember anything else hanging up. Like well, that. if you were 15, then how old was Bob? Three years younger. And then Liddy. And Liddy was three years, about two and a half years younger than that. Well, it really is a and, uh, handsome picture. We are in the backyard of the Cleve Becker house. And Jane and Mike were talking about the summer house that was out here. And I really don't remember using that that much. Jane? That's right. The, uh, we did not use it, but the ones I think that used it the most was the firecrackers. 
this right here is the foundation of it and there was a pecan tree in the middle and it was built around it and it was screened and it was some, oh I suppose about 12 to 14 foot ceiling in there and it was wonderfully cool and all in the summertime in a absolutely marvelous place for girls to spend the night parties and yes. they had uh, yeah, the really firecrackers were Barbara's Barbara's uh, uh, group, group and, and uh, Sally, was, and in Sally it. was in it and Phyllis and Janice and uh, the Mary Evelyn Collins and Norma Hedgepeth yes. and uh, that there was they had a real good group of girls and this is where they had most fun. Now Liddy's used it also, the uh, Polly Parrots. Uh -huh. And they had a good time out here. During World War II, when we didn't have any gasoline, nobody could go any place, we had a badminton uh, set up right here, badminton net, and we played many a badminton game during World War II. Uh -huh. Right there and played badminton. Now Jane, was it true that Beth Henley used this kitchen that was in the back of the house somewhat for in her play as a setting for her play Crimes of the Heart. No, the kitchen is her grandmother's kitchen in Hazelhurst. Oh, in Hazelhurst. In Hazelhurst. All right. It's almost when you walk in there, you can feel that you just see it. Uh, well, that's probably uh -huh. an older house older than house this and is. Older house and much larger kitchen. Uh-huh. Now, Beth Henley is Liddy Becca Henley's Caldwell's daughter. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Jane. Right now we are on Becker Street in Brookhaven and this is the home of Third and Betty Drain Becker. And their children were Boozy Becker, F.F. F. Becker II, Walter Drain Becker, who was always known as Teeny, Betty Becker Steffen, who was the oldest of the children, Victor Becker, who now lives in Brookhaven with his family, uh, and Mary Becca Hatcher. Now, Jeff, you were telling me something about the house. It started as a very small, compact house with two bedrooms. And as the family grew, they added till it, and it kept growing, and they kept adding till it spread all over the lot. Now, when Chester came to Brookhaven to marry me, he stayed in their guest room, which they always called Memphis. And that's on the left there. And that room with the windows was such a pleasant sitting, I mean, a family room. It was very cool. There was so much brick. Uh, wasn't it all brick walls in that room and tile floors? And Uncle Ferd was a great gardener. And there's the lot next door is still vacant and it was the site of his wonderful vegetable garden where he grew all of those good tomatoes. On Becker Street also is what is known as the Millsaps House. It was built and owned by the man who later founded Millsaps College in Jackson, Mississippi. And F.F. F. Becker I, Mommy and Pappy and their family, lived in this house before they built the big house that we saw a little, a short time. We are now on Storm Avenue, and this is the residence, or was the residence, of Eileen Becker Phillips and her husband Jasper, who was always known in the family as Brother Jeff. He had come from Suffolk, Virginia, and then later was active in the brickyard. Uh, their children were Mary Dunning, uh, Jappy, who also worked at the Brickyard, and Peter Phillips, and daughters Virginia and Seymour. Seymour is now living in Jackson, Mississippi, and she was always active as a newspaper woman. She worked for many years as a society editor for the Jackson Daily News. At the time, in the 30s, which I remember, 
Ain't Eileen was this dear, tall, very artistic person, and her house was just charming. Particularly in the rear, there was a patio with beautiful old-fashioned flowers always growing. She and Aunt Kathleen both had, both had that touch for growing the uh, flowers that just gave so much charm to the uh, landscape. Jeff, do you remember anything particular about when they lived here? Well, she designed the house and had features of the interior of very little woodwork around the doors and windows. They, they finished, the plaster came right back into the casing. Uh -huh. And the brickwork looks so pretty. Jane told me at one time that Aunt, when they were building this house that Aunt Eileen got every color brick that they made out at the brickyard and put them in piles and had the uh, brick masons to just pick them at random. And so you end up with this very lovely muted color, you know, of different shades of bricks on the house. Looking east on Storm Avenue, you see the beautiful avenue of oaks where so many of the trees, you, looking down this way, you see the lovely trees which meet overhead and give a canopy of green along this street. Jap and Eloise Becker now live a little further along and we will visit them in just a few minutes is looking west on Storm Avenue and further down this street is the home of Victor Becker and his wife Louise. They are right at the corner of Becker Street and Storm Avenue. Fanny oh and Fanny Phillips. It we are still on Storm Avenue and directly ahead is the famous Butterfield House. It is now owned by David Lovell, an interior decorator, and he has done a lot to improve the house, but it is quite impressive with the handsome Corinthian columns and very spacious room. But the reason we are on Storm Avenue is to visit Jeff and Eloise Becker in their new home that was known as the Wiley House when I was growing up. It was the home of my good friend, 